we're going to get into um, the uncolored sports segment. Again, something that I, I didn't necessarily want to get into. Let me see if I can get this thing going. Otherwise, I'll have to take a quick break and get it, get it working here. So let me set it up. Um, I, I'm, I watch on occasion when I, when I do watch any sports stuff. Uh, there's a couple of channels that I'll listen to, and there's one YouTube channel that I'll listen to. Uh, it's uh, Outkick360. And, and this is why. ESPN has ruined sports with, with the woke BS. Um, all of these social justice sports leagues and, and corporations has ruined sports for me. I, I was a guy who would listen to, to ESPN. It would be on all day, every day, 24-7, back in the day. Uh, they, then, then it turned into some, you know, racist organization. Everything's race. Everything's race. All right, whatever. So now I just have a couple of things that I watch. Um, and now Kick360 I pick is because the guys on there, uh, Chad Withrow, um, Jonathan Hutton, and um, Paul Koharski, they seem to be reasonable guys. You know, even Paul, who gets on my nerves sometimes, not on my nerves, but, you know, he, he can't stop talking over people. You know, he's, he's got this old school kind of New York lib attitude. But he's as reasonable as anybody that I've ever met. Very reasonable, very honest kind of guy. And that's what I like about them. They tend to be very honest and reasoned in their opinions and things. So I can listen to that. Not dogmatic, generally speaking. And so they're talking about something in baseball, which who cares, baseball. Um, but it, but what, what caught me is that there was some argument between two baseball players and one of them it turned into a racial thing somehow. One guy called something by, said something about Jackie Robinson. I'll, I'll let you, you hear it for yourself. So it goes on for about a couple of minutes. Um, but I heard Chad Withrow say something that almost made me fall out of my chair because it was such a dumb idea. And Chad's not a dumb guy. He's super smart. And again, tends to be very, very reasonable. So when he said this, it, it kind of blew me away. So let me see if I can get this going and you can hear it for yourself. Um, craziness. I don't know what Donaldson meant and, and if there was something bad in his heart about it or not, but I don't know how you judge that and determine it. Well, I mean, right. it, look. It's a it, stupid it's, thing to say. We know that. The reality of it is it's, it's however Tim Anderson wanted to handle it. If Tim Anderson takes it as racist, it's racist. Yeah. I well, mean, there's no, there's no other way around it. Whether I don't think Josh Donaldson's a racist. You know, I don't think he was intending it to be a racial comment. He was giving the guy hell because he said he sees himself as the modern day Jackie Robinson in a 2019 interview. Right, and he thinks that's And that they have a history. So and here's that had where, been a joke with him in the past, according to Donaldson. According to Donaldson, he's used it before, but this has been building up since 2019 where they've had some back and forth in games. So it's poor judgment on Donaldson's part because if it's someone, even if you have a friendly rivalry with an opponent and you know you can give each other hell yeah. and there can be back and forth, Thanks. you can get away with it. But if Tim Anderson legitimately hates you and you get, you know, you're over there, he's at third and you're calling him Jackie and he, wa he wants to take it or sees it as racist, it's racist. So he's not going to win. I mean, I just take your one game suspension and, and move on. And again, I'm not accusing Josh Donaldson of racism, but what I'm saying is you don't like each other, clearly. He took it as a racial thing. Then it's going to be deemed racist. There, Josh Donaldson cannot win in this. No. Regardless of who's right or who's wrong, and again, I, 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 everything I've heard about both of these guys and what Donaldson's explanation was, I don't think he intended it to be racist. But if you take a joke too far and you say something that could be taken that way to the wrong person, they are going to take it a certain way. And if they report on you or say that, it's racist. You lose. But what's it hurt for him to appeal it? He's on the COVID list. Okay, that's... that's that's the idea. That's, that's, that's the thing we're going to talk about. So if the guy, I don't, I don't know what the guy's name is, of course, because it's, it's, it's baseball. What Chad says is, if this guy says it's racist, then it's racist. Is that true? It, does, is racism determined by some person's feelings or is it something else that's an objective thing that's the question and it's not just racism it's really anything 
anything that somebody finds offensive, is it offensive because somebody thinks it's offensive? Or there's something objective that we can go by to go, well, actually, that, I mean, you might be offended by it, but nobody should care. And I'll give you an example. Because this is a very popular idea among a certain group of people today. Okay? There's a lot of idiots who own corporations. They're probably your boss someplace. Who, who are susceptible to this crazy idea, and it's a dumb and dangerous idea. I mean, it's, it's running with scissors dumb. It's, it's dangerous to all of society if this is what's going on, or if we're going to say that this is okay. Now, and I want to make it clear. I don't know that Chad Withrow is saying that this is the way it should be, or that he advocates this. He, he, he didn't make it clear, because that's what I thought at first. But as I listened to it again, I'm holding out the possibility that what he's saying is, is that this is how it's going to be handled by Major League Baseball, in which case Major League Baseball is the idiot. If this is the tact that they're going to take. That because somebody calls something racist or sexist or whatever it is, that's what makes it the thing. Okay, why is that a problem? Because it takes reality and turns it into a subjective thing rather than an objective thing. And if it is true that somebody being offended by something makes it whatever the offense should be, then we have this crazy world where anything happens. Now, here's why I tell you nobody believes that. Okay. When I walk by somebody's house or somebody's wearing a shirt, especially if it's a white folk, somebody white, and they're one of, wearing one of these Black Lives Matter matters shirts or whatever it is, that's offensive to me. Because in my opinion, Black Lives Matter is the worst organization for black people and the country. That's my opinion. And when I see white folks wearing that shirt, it offends me. Now, do you think anybody's going to go make them take it off? Of course not. Because the idea that if somebody thinks something offensive Therefore, it's wrong is a lie. It only works if you have a certain ideology. If you're in a certain camp, then you somehow are able to tell everybody else in the country what they can say, what they can't say, what they can think, what they can't think, what they can like and what they cannot like. And, and this idea that if I'm black and I don't like the circumstance that I'm in and I'm going to call racism, because we've trained white folks in the society to back off because they don't want to be called racist. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's like, uh, what is that stuff you put on the vampires? It's, it's, it's like that, uh, I don't know what you call it, but, it, but it's like the cross to a vampire, calling a white dude a racist. And so if a black person just feels, says racism, they know that white folks are going to back off. You know, I, I, I probably mentioned before when I was, you know, back at the PD, some sergeant didn't get a job. Some black sergeant didn't get a job. And he wrote an article, racism, racism, racism. And I knew the sergeant, nicest guy in the world. And I mean that. But I was not surprised that he didn't get the job because he's not that smart. At least not in my estimation. Not when I worked with him. Nicest guy in the world. But when he didn't get the job, didn't surprise me. But when you cry racism, white folks lay down. Give you what you want. Partly because they don't respect you. Partly because they don't think you're, uh, how should I say, they don't think you're on the level that they are. Because they don't need to do that. The point I'm making is, is that if we make our reality conform to the, to the minds of a few people who think that skin color determines everything, it's a dangerous idea for the whole country. Or that something's sexist because they don't like it. Or I'm offended by anything. So now I can shut you down, turn you off. And it's, a, it, and, it's, and it's so funny because when I was in uh, high school, <laughs> you know, I, I, I heard these things about this thing about the, uh, the Salem witch burnings. I thought, that's insane. Why, why, why would people burn somebody because they're, what are they doing? Weird putting, you know, making rat soup. I don't know what they were doing, but we got to burn you because you're different from us. It's the same idea. Don't like what you think. 
don't like what you're about, don't like your ideas, I got to punish you. And that's the dumb idea that Chad Withrow is talking about. And again, I don't know if he's advocating for it or just simply stating that that's the way things are going to be. Um, either way, it's, it's, it's a terribly dangerous idea. Um, you know, I had a, a buddy of mine, and he, again, nicest guy, but he's unfortunately, you know, not really for him, because again, we still hang out, but he's your typical guilty white, you know, liberal, rich guy from the Bay Area. And every time I thought, hey, Kev, man, I'm telling you how much I hate racism. Boy, you, ooh, I hate racism. You know, that's his thing, because he wants to let everybody know he's an ally. Fine, whatever. But we're at some event, you know, out there at, at work, and, and he comes up to me, he goes, man, this woman had a, a, a pin from that, that was like an SS pin uh, from the, the Third Rice. You know, it's a motorcycle thing, and so there's a lot of these things going around. A lot of people have, you know, the helmets on from, the, from that time. And he goes, I was so offended, and I was going to tell her to leave, but I decided not to. And I asked him, I said, what makes you think that she should care that you're offended? Why, why would she care that you don't like something or that it makes you feel bad or you think it's bad? Why should she care? In other words, you know, he goes on to talk about how horrible Auschwitz was and, and, and think, yeah, I, listen, I don't know anybody who denies that, but I'm not sure how her wearing a pen, why would that make you want to punish her for that? Because she wasn't there at Auschwitz. She may not even understand the significance of it. And, and if it's not something that she intends, to represent the horrors of Auschwitz. Maybe it's just a, you know, a fashion thing, just like the, the helmets that, that a lot of guys wear from, the, from those, those uh, old Sergeant Schultz helmets. Just the fashion thing. Why would you get upset by that? So he asked me, he goes, well, what about the rebel flag? Doesn't that upset you that people wear the rebel flag? And, and thankfully, my dad spoke to me about this when I was a young kid. Well, not young kid, I was in my 20s. But he basically said is, if you're not, the, the idea is this. If somebody wearing a rebel flag suddenly changed my life somehow, then yeah, I'd be upset. You know, if, if somebody was wearing a rebel flag t-shirt and I come home, my wife says, I don't love you anymore, I'm leaving you. I'm like, what's going on? That guy was wearing a rebel flag t-shirt. I'd have a problem with the rebel flag. Right, if I tried to get a job and you go, nope, I'm sorry, that guy was wearing a rebel flag so you can't have a job, I would be upset about the rebel flag. Or maybe I'd question the, the sanity of my wife or the guy who's, who's, you know, the employer. But either way, if none of those things are occurring, why would I care that somebody's wearing that rebel flag? Even if they believed whatever the rebel flag was supposed to represent. In other words, if it's not affecting me, what do I care what they believe? Why, why, do, why does everybody have to believe and understand the world the way you think they should? Otherwise, you're going to punish them. That's this idea. That's how stupid it is. Here's a couple of other examples. You remember this kid? Back in the day, uh, this is not that long ago. Remember this kid, James Damore? Right, working at Google. Google's like, hey, we want to find out how do you get more women to work here? All right. I mean, apparently, the, the, the job opening in the newspaper wasn't enough. I mean, you figure if there's, there's openings and women aren't applying... Okay, that's what, what do you want? They could apply if they want to. Why is it your fault that you go, this is the job that's open and whoever wants to apply can apply, and you're not getting a lot of women applying. Why is that your fault or your problem? But James Demore goes and says, hey, listen, I'm going to write a paper. He does his research and says, listen, women are different from men. Men like things. Women like people. And women tend not to, to gravitate towards these kinds of jobs. Fired him. Because he was wrong? No. The science was almost exactly right. If you talk to people in that field, nobody had a problem with, with the strength of his arguments. But a certain group of people thought it was racist, sexist, misogynist, whatever is, whatever term that they've made up in the past 20 years to call everybody. Guy gets fired. Punished because his ideas were different. That's Chad's idea. And again, I don't know if he's supporting it or just simply saying that's the way it is. I'm not sure. But it's a terrible, pernicious idea. Here's another one. 
Lindsay Shepard, right, about the same time. She's teaching in college, I guess, in, in, in uh, where was it? Canada, maybe? I don't know. I should do my research. <laughs> but she's teaching a class, shows a video of Dr. Jordan Peterson talking about, I don't know. The social justice woke idiots who run the college get wind of it and fire her. Just showed a five minute video. And, and she says, listen, I don't even agree with the guy. But I thought that my students should hear both sides of the, the issue. Novel idea. Are you kidding me? You mean you think that kids should hear views that oppose another view and, and, and they can make up their own minds? That's craziness. You should be fired, burned at the stake. That's the idea. Somebody thought it was offensive. We got to punish this guy. Doesn't matter if there was any intent. Doesn't matter if the thing that was said was even offensive. Doesn't matter. It's a crazy idea. And it's gone on through history. Burning people at the stake because you don't like their ideas. I'll, I'll give you one example. This might be a stretch. People might go, Kev, you're stretching. This is not the same. Jesus Christ. You're, you're, it's the same idea. You, yeah, it might be a stretch. I'm simply talking about the idea. Just, just, just follow with me for a sec. Jesus is walking around where he was. Just, you know, telling folks, telling folks the real. Jews didn't like it. Why? Was he trying to take over? No. He was saying things that the Jews didn't like, so they said, crucify him. And Pontius Pilate, like MLB, they're like, listen, we don't know what the problem is. Why, why are you after the guy? Hey, he's saying things we don't like. Crucify him. Pontius is like, all right, whatever. That's what corporations do. They don't look at objective data. They don't, they don't look at the intent. It's just if you, if you get a, a, a small, maddening crowd crying for somebody to be punished because of something that was said, corporations, right, bosses, companies, yeah, let's just get rid of them. It, it's, it's a crazy idea. It's, it, it is literally one of the dumbest ideas. Now, fortunately, God used that for it to save everyone. So. <laughs> I'm not mad about that last one because we needed that. But the point I'm making is, is the idea that Chad Withrow was either simply explaining that that's the way it's going to be handled or advocates, and I have a hard time thinking that he advocates something so ignorant and so stupid. It's still dangerous. That's why I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to give him the running with scissors award. I'm not going to give it to Chad. I'm going to give it to major league baseball or Chad. If it's Chad's idea, he gets it. If it's major league baseball, the MLB gets it. It's the running with scissors award for having su such a stupid and pernicious, dangerous idea. As if somebody says it's this, that's what makes it this. It's a stupid idea. All right. All right, that's enough of that.